Hello, wonderful people. Hello, saints. Hello, people of the living God. I'm here to share some Bible, some holy scripture, and to talk a little bit about some things that the Holy Spirit has been putting in my heart to share with you today. And the last video I posted, the last video I made was um, the video on do not defile yourselves, remain holy, for God is holy. And people of God, this is a season of deep consecration. This is a season of seeking him like we've never seeked him before. Now, I'm going to use myself in a, as an example. I walk with God. I talk with God on a daily basis. That's my life. That's my life. I pray on a daily basis. I speak in tongues on a daily basis. I read my Bible, not on a daily basis, but I read my Bible as much as I can throughout the day or whatever. And... I'm thinking, Lord, I have a relationship with you. I have a relationship. I go to you for everything. But he has called me to consecration. And as I was in my consecration, it was the most beautiful thing. Because you think you love God. You think you're doing all the right things. But when we want to go deeper with him, my goodness, he shows us a side of him that is so intimate and beautiful. And we can't even scratch the surface. We can't even begin to scratch the surface of how we see him, of, of how <laughs> of how to act when we're around him and how to love him. And when he, when I was in this time of consecration, my goodness, I felt a love for him that I have never felt before. And guys, I, there was a time where it was, it was just me and him. That's it. And you know when we had the shutdown, I didn't go anywhere. I, I was just basically in his presence. I would lose track of time. I wouldn't even know what day it was, what time it was. And and even then, I I was I was in his presence. But this was something different. And he's calling us to go deeper with him. He's calling us to chase after him. And he says, how bad do you want me? How bad do you want to see me? How much do you love me? What are we willing to do for him? What are we willing to do? What kind of heights are we willing to climb? How deep are we willing to go? How deep are we willing to dive in? To get to know him on a personal, intimate level that you have never known or experienced of him before. I mean, how, how, it's like when you love somebody and I don't even consider it just, I don't even consider it love anymore. Honestly, like when you love somebody, you just cannot understand the love, the true love of God. You cannot it's hard to fathom his love. But imagine the person that you love and you are willing to do anything for that person. And you are, you know, imagine that the love that we should have for God, that we are willing to do whatever it takes, that we are willing to look crazy for him, that we are willing to do crazy things for him if he tells you. And I'm going, I'm going to go into this song. I'm going to, I'm trying, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me just stop. 
how deep and far are we willing to go to seek him? What are you willing to do to chase after him? To continue to chase after him and get to the point and not got to this point where I said nothing else matters. Nothing else. Nothing else matters. I got to that point where like King Solomon and I posted a video or a short on this and I said everything is meaningless. Without him, everything means nothing without him. And it's good that you're preaching all over the world. And it's amazing that you're casting out demons. And it's awesome that you are healing the sick and doing miracles. But get this. There could be anybody that professes with their mouth that they are Christian. And they can go out and cast out demons in the name of Jesus and demons will go. They can go out and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover because they use the name of Jesus. But how many can say they truly have a true intimate relationship with God that he can call you his friend like he did with Abraham? That he can say, this is my friend. It's beautiful. And I said, Lord, I want to be called your friend. I want to be called your friend. Show me how to be your friend. Teach me how to be your friend. So people of God, I'm going to read some Bible with you and, and, and I'm going to read in Matthew chapter three, verse three. Okay. And it says in those days, in those days, John the Baptist came to Judean, Judean will to the Judean wilderness and began preaching. His message was repent for your sins and return to God for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, he is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. John's clothes were woven with coarse camel hair and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. This is the season that you're going to look crazy like John. You're going to look crazy for the things that God is going to have you have you doing. You're going to look crazy to other people. If he calls you to consecrate yourself for, I don't know, an amount, whatever many days, 60 days, 70 days, whatever, people are going to think you're crazy. If he tells you, I need you to go on a 40 day fast, people are going to think you're crazy. But people of God, this is, I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyways, okay, let me read this. But this is time, this is the time that some of us are going to look really crazy. Some of us are going to look almost to the point of losing our minds. But we're not. We want God. We want to chase after God. We want the things he wants. We want to work in his will, not outside of his will, but his will in his will. Let his will be done in our lives. Take your will out of it. I'm guilty of this, guys. I'm guilty. And I'm preaching to myself on this in this area. We think it's his will. But in reality, it's our will. We have to repent and say, God, forgive me if I have been working outside of your will and working in my own will. That hurts him. I had to repent of that. Okay. Anyways, people from Jerusalem and from all Judea and all over the Jordan Valley went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, 
he baptized him in the Jordan River. This is a time of deep repentance. And during my consecration, I had to do that. Deep repentance from the heart, not just saying it out of your mouth, but truly meaning what you say. Truly meaning what you say. Like, Lord, I am so sorry if I thought I was doing a good work. I'm forgive me. If I'm thinking because I'm making videos and I'm healing the sick, and I'm doing this, that I'm doing your what we are doing is work. But what is your intention? What is your intention? It's great and dandy. You're out there preaching the world. Praise the Lord. But your relationship with God is down here. Your relationship, your friendship with God, you don't even have a friendship with him. You just have a, a, a so-and-so relationship, but it's down here. We have to step back and say, what am I truly doing? Why am I doing this? Do I really care about the will of God or I just care about likes? Do I care about uh, how many shares I get and, and how many countries I travel to and how many people I meet and how many prophets know my name and how many preachers know who I am? Shame on you and shame on us. Woe to us. Woe to us. Woe to us. That if that's what we care about. Woe to us. That we don't even care about his people. We don't even care about the sheep. We just care about us. We just care about our will. We just care about. Let me. Let me. Um. You know, be financially blessed and, and, and this and that and, and drive this car and do that and, and travel the world. And, and I'm preaching the gospel. I'm preaching the gospel. Woe to us. Repent. Especially leaders. Repent. You need to show a better example. I'm talking to every leader. Because I don't idolize leaders. And I don't care how big you are. I don't care in any of that. I say you set the example for everybody else. If you are a leader of God's flock, you set the example. A better example. Be a man of character, a man of valor, a man of your word. Be a man, be a leader. Show the character of Jesus. It says, but when he saw many Pharisees, listen to this. When he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee from God's wrath? And this is to you religious people out there and religious leaders. Prove by the way you live. That you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't say to each other, we're safe. We are descendants of Abraham. And you know what, people of God? A lot of Christians are like that. They think that just because of Abraham... And God's promises to him because God doesn't break his promise. He doesn't break his word. He's a man. He's a God of his word, not a man. He's a God of his word. And you think just because, just because of Abraham, I'm good. I'll be blessed. Just because of that, we don't have to do anything else. We think just because of that, just like the Pharisees and Sadducees. And he said, don't just say to each other, we're safe for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. That means nothing. He said, for I tell you, listen to this, this is powerful. For I tell you, God can create children, children of Abraham from every stone. 
God can do it all. He says, good for you. You call yourself descendants of Abraham. That is great. But it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. And we think as Christians too, just because of the finished work of the cross, that's it. We can sit back and not read our word, go to, go to, go to Bible study, go to church every Sunday and Wednesday and be fine and be okay. That generational curses will, uh, we don't have to break those. We don't have to everything. You know, we don't have to pray for healing because you know what? The work of the cross did it all. The work of the cross. We are lazy. That's what we call laziness in the body. We're lazy. And we think we got to think about this. You're lazy, but you want God to use you. But you're lazy. You want God to use you. You want to be a you want to be a preacher. You want to be this. You want to be all of this, but you're lazy. You don't even, you don't even pray. You don't even intercede. You don't even stay up or and pray for the nation. You don't do none of that because you're lazy. You think because I'm a descendant of Abraham, because, because I'm saved now because God died for me. I'm good. I don't have to fight for, I don't have to pray. I don't have to fight for my family. I, I don't believe in generational curses. I don't have to fight for anything. And you just sit with your hands folded. You sit with your hands folded. My God. People of God, we need to work on our character. And I challenge every... Work on your character. Work on your character. Work on your character. And then he said, That means nothing, for I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from every stone. Even now the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the root of the trees. Yes, every tree that, do not, do, that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. Are you producing good fruit? What kind of tree are you? What kind of tree are you? He says, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. We must repent. You might think that, oh, I don't need to repent. I don't need to do that. You need to repent. It should be a daily thing. But what I learned in my time of consecration with God is that there's such thing as deep, deep repentance that he will bring in surface things that you think you have gotten rid of deep repentance, people of God. We need to repent. We need to go into deep repentance before God. He's called for the ones he's calling to go deeper with him. You're going to look like a maniac. You're going to look like you're crazy. But all you are is crazy for him. All you are doing is seeking him and running after him. And you don't care what everybody thinks. And you don't care what everybody says. And you do not care. That was John. He was in the wilderness. He knew his assignment. He knew. I have to prepare the way for Jesus. I'm going to prepare the way for him. Repent and be baptized. What is your assignment? Are you on your assignment? Are you consecrating yourself? Are you trying to remain holy as he is holy? Are you not touching the defiled thing to remain clean before the king of glory? What are you doing? But someone is coming who is greater than I am. So much greater, he said, that I am not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Have you even been baptized with his fire? He is ready to separate 
to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork. And I posted a video on this about the separation is here. It is here. You're going to see who is for him and who is against him. You're going to see that. You're going to see who is for him and who is against him. This is a season also of separation. Either you're the sheep or you're the goat. It says, then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into his barn, but burning the shaft with never ending fire. Are you the shaft? Are you about to get burned with his holy fire? Because fire test. Fire test. If you put this through the fire, if you put a paper through the fire, it's going to get burned so easy. If you put a pen through the fire, it's going to get burned. Not as easy as the paper. But if you put gold... If you put gold through the fire, it does not get burned. It has to be at a very, very, very high temperature for it to melt. This is a serious time. Because God, God knows who wants to go deeper. God knows who wants to go deeper. He's the examiner of our hearts. He knows who wants to go deeper with him. He knows it. And you pretenders out there and fakers, you put on your mask. That's not going to work anymore. That's not going to work anymore. He's going to rip that mask right off your face. And then it says, then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried talking him out of it. <laughs> I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, we got to work on our character and be more like Jesus. And be more like Jesus. I want to be more like Jesus. Am I even close? Not at all. Am I seeking to be like him? Yes. Am I working on my character? Yes. Is he's working? If he is he working on my character? Absolutely. And I see what he's been doing. I have I have a job where I I am around so many different types of people and so many different types of people carry so many different types of demons. And you know, if you carry the glory of God, demons begin to manifest in the presence of God and I dealt with that ever since I came to the Lord people manifesting people coming against me at work my own, some of them are my own co-workers and he has been building my character and building my character and building my and I and, and and I just got that revelation not long ago about that him building my character at first I'm like God why is it I just knew I was like okay I know it's an attack I know it's a spiritual attack blah 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 I'm not gonna get out of character but he was been working on my character and working on my character how are you gonna act in these situations are you gonna make me proud the way you act or you're not have I made him proud in every time everywhere no and how I acted with certain situations. Sometimes I had to remove myself. Use wisdom. But he, I thank him for that. Because he has given me wisdom to handle situations. Tough situations. But there was times where I had to remove myself. I had to leave work. Because I knew. Any one more. One more word. One more something that somebody said to me. Would be the, the needle that broke the camel's back. I would have went off because it's a time of the enemy picking on you 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 until you blow up but i was like oh no you filthy devil you're not going to do this to me i you're not going to get me out of character i'm going to remove myself so we need to be more like jesus we need to be more like him but jesus said it should be done for we must carry out all that God requires. 
All that God requires, we must carry it out, God said. And he always said, let God's will be done. Sometimes we want to do our own will. We want to act out on our own emotion. But how many of us have said, God, let your will be done in in my marriage. Let your will be done in, 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 in my life. Let your will be done at my job. Let your will be done everywhere, in my family, in myself. Man, we're so just all about ourselves. We got to break out of that. Hmm. So John agreed to baptize him. After his bapti- baptism, that's funny, right, Jesus? You're telling Jesus, I, I don't know Jesus. <laughs> um, after his baptism, as Jesus came up from the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, not a dove, like a dove and settling on him. And the voice from heaven said, this is my dearly son who brings me great joy. Now, how beautiful is that? I want to hear that from Jesus. I want to hear that from my father. Say, daughter, I'm so proud of you. I am so well pleased with you. I'm so well pleased. I'm so well pleased on how you handled that situation. I'm so well pleased on how you forgave. I'm so well pleased that you do not hold anything against your brethren. I'm so, I'm so proud and so impressed on how you handled your coworker. I'm so proud of how you handled your wife. I'm so proud of how you talked to your husband, even though he made you mad. I'm so proud of how you talked to your son, even though he did something and went contrary to what you told him. I'm so proud of how you went out and you talked to somebody that was hurting about me. I'm so proud. What are you doing to make God proud in your life? It's not about yourself. It's not about yourself. Get over yourself. Get over yourself, leaders. Get over yourself, YouTube prophets. Get over yourself. Your intentions are wrong. Your heart is rotten. You are like the Pharisees. You act like your cup is clean on the inside, but it's filthy, dirty, rotten, and then you're And it looks like you're clean on the outside because you wear your suit, your tie, you wear your shiny little shoes. You, you're all, uh, what is it called? You're all cleaned up. You got your nice little fade. Your beard. Shame on you. Woe to you. Woe to you. I, I, and I and I see people like this and I see people that can't keep their word. I see people that can't even be on time. I see people and you want God to you want to run God's king. You want to be a part of God's kingdom and run and help him run his kingdom. Well, not help him run the kingdom, but you want to be a part of his kingdom. But you can't even be early to work. You can't nothing. No, you, nobody can depend on you because you take your word back all the time and. Um, you know, or you're, you always lying to people. I mean, little things like this, we have to work on our character and be more like Jesus. You have to be more like Jesus. Now, are we, uh, we should strive for that. Are we close? No. But should we strive to be like Jesus every day? Yes. And it's not easy. So this is a season of deep consecration. This is what the Lord has been putting in my spirit, in my soul. This is a spirit. I mean, this is a season of of deep consecration. And I put, this is a season of crazy. (laughs) This is the season of crazy. And what I mean by that is you're going to look crazy like John the Baptist. People are going to think you're crazy that you keep repeating yourself. Repent. Repent for God is near. God is coming. Repent. I got to go on a 40 day fast, guys. I got to, I got to, I got to consecrate myself. 
for 60 days. I got, and people are going to be like, are you crazy? Are you insane? Why? Why do you got to do a four-day fast? Why you got to do a whatever fast? Why you got to do a seven-day fast? Why Why you have to like turn your phone off for 50 days? Why? People are going to look at you like, yeah, you're crazy. People think I'm crazy that I don't watch TV. And that's nothing to me. Like regular TV, I'm talking about regular like cable and games and and ESPN and movies and all that mess I stay away from. Now, do I watch it while I'm at work? I have to. I'm there. People think I'm crazy because of that. I mean, this is I'm like, really? That's nothing. How do you think they're going to uh, take that? You say, oh, I'm going on a 40, you know, well, you're not supposed to tell them that you're going on a 40 day fast. But anyways, what if you share that with somebody after your 40 day fast is done and you're like, yeah, I went on a four, the Lord called me to a 40 day fast. They're going to think you're insane and crazy, but it's okay. This is a season of crazy. God is going to cause some of us to do some really crazy things, guys. And this is what I'm talking about. Deep consecration. This is a time of deep consecration. This is a time of seeking the Lord with everything we have and not seeking him like, like, uh, like you think, like I thought I was just, I was seeking him. I'm like, Lord, I'm seeking you all the time. I I pray to you all the time. I spend time with you all the time. No, this is some deep, 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 deep seeking. Really falling in love after his heart. (sighs) Really falling in love after or coming or falling in love with his heart. So, guys, this is a season of deep consecration. This is the deep. You need to go deep, deep, deep with him. And I'm not saying everybody. Because some of y'all are too. They're lazy. They think just because I'm telling you just the finish of the finish of the the finished work of the cross is enough. And they think because, um, you know, oh. You know, we, we, we're, we're part of the, we're, we're not, you know, we're part of uh, the body of Christ now. So we're blessed. He promised it to Abraham. So, Hey, we, 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 we stand on those blessings. Just lazy. We're lazy. We don't want to seek him. We don't want to pray. We don't want to fast. We don't, we don't want to go into consecration. We don't want to turn our phones off. If you have a problem and you can't turn your phone off for a few days or three days or a week, you have a problem. You have an issue. You have an issue. So that's the word for today. That is the word. That is the word. And I pray for those that are going deeper with God, that are seeking him like never before. May you find him. And this is a scripture he was telling me. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. Ask and you shall receive. Not in that order, but ask and you shall receive. Continue to see, continue to ask, continue to knock on that door. Continue. Continue to seek him with all you have, your soul, your might, everything, everything. It's okay if you look crazy. It's okay. It's okay if people think at you, look at you and say you're crazy. It's okay if God, you, you know what? God told me, I need you to be on just going on, on a vegetarian diet. I need you to just be vegetarian. I said, okay, Lord. Now, did it take me a few times for me to say, okay, yes. But when he kept confirming it, confirming it, (laughs) see, sometimes we're hard headed. We're like, uh, Lord, I don't think you're talking to me, but I don't don't think you're talking to me. And then I'm like this, speak to me, Lord. And then again, it always goes to back to Daniel. I told you to get on water and vegetables. So it's going to look crazy for some people. People are not going to understand. They're not going to understand. Why are you doing this? Why from one day you wake up and you're vegetarian? Why are you doing a 40 day consecration? Why are you fasting for 40 days? Why are you doing this? We're going to look crazy, but it's okay. It's a season of crazy. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I pray y'all have an awesome day. Shalom. Shalom.